Hello everybody. Today I will be discussing about the processing of the uh, magnetic materials. So you now in modern industry the, there is a huge application of the magnetic material. So here we will try to get some understanding how this magnetic materials is basically processed. But before that we need to understand that very basics about the uh, magnetic materials. So this what magnet is actually uh, is the originate from the known as the magnite. So from that is the source or origination of this what ma magnet and from that we can that there is a development of the magnetic materials from the iron oxide or lodestone which can be used as a uh, magnetic compass which is the initial utilization of the this uh, magnetic material to make the uh, compass. Now lodestone is basically one mines in the province of the uh, magnesia. So from there this what is actually the magnetic uh, materials or magnetism is usually comes from this uh, particular source. Now you understand this the application of the uh, magnetic material is uh, like that we you create the magnetic flux can be transferred from one pole to another pole easily from north to south and uh, there is a distribution of the magnetic flux and this uh, uh, from the magnetic material and this magnetic material will try to attract with the another magnetic material. But in organized way we will try to understand what a we basically represents this the magnetic materials and how this magnetic materials can be processed uh, which is the basic objective of this particular uh, module. So definition in magnetic materials we need the state of magnetization can be induced. So actually there is a magnetic materials are there but magnet can be induced in this particular magnetic material or there might be some kind of the material where permanent magnet exists in this particular material. So both way we can define, we can utilize the magnetic materials in the different applications. So since definitely when magnetized uh, one particular material uh, then they actually create some kind of the magnetic field and it existence over the surrounding space. So that means with such a limited space this magnetic field actually exists. Now if you look into the classification of the magnetic materials based on the relative values and the sign of the magnetic suspectability that means depending upon the extent of the magnetic uh, properties uh, these magnetic materials can be classified in the different uh, types basically the this thing. One is the diamagnetic materials. This is basically diamagnetic materials simply understand is basically not having any kind of the uh, magnetic effect. For example, in this case we understand that these electrons are pair and no electrons are available freely. So that is why this case the magnetic properties is basically neutralized uh, in the diamagnetic material. For example, wood, we know wood not having any kind of the magnetic properties. Similarly, copper, gold, lead, water, they can be considered as a diamagnetic material. So in other way, there are superconductor, superconductors is basically the perfect diamagnetic material as they expel all the external magnetic field. So in this cases superconductors can be considered as the ideal diamagnetic material. So there is no existence of any kind of the expel all ex any kind of the external magnetic field. Similarly there is a paramagnetic material also. In paramagnetic material these are the having the capability of slightly attracted to a magnetic field, slightly attracted so in the magnetic field and therefore and may not able to retain the magnetic field uh, magnetic properties uh, when external magnetic field is basically removed or in, in this case. For example, aluminum, lithium and molybdenum this particular material since it is affected in the presence of the external magnetic field but that it is a little very little attraction to the magnetic field is existence in case of the paramagnetic material. But once we remove this, this external magnetic field then this completely magnetic properties is actually uh, removed. Similarly ferromagnetic materials is basically type of the magnetism that enables compounds and very particular alloy with iron. So one particular compound and alloy with iron they actually act as a permanent magnet or get attracted by an external magnetic field. So that is called as the ferromagnetic material or we can say that it is a it is a kind of magnetism ferromagnetism it is equally having other permanent magnets can be considered as a ferromagnetic material. Similarly super 
uh, paramagnetic. Super paramagnetics is something like that. It is basically state of the magnetism uh, which appears in the small ferromagnetic or ferromagnetic nanoparticles. So, very small the size or ferromagnetic nanoparticles we have uh, in, in, the, in the like a paramagnetic material, but it is a confined in the very small nanoparticles. So, in this case the magnetism can randomly flip direction. So, direction can be randomly changed in the influence of the uh, temperature. So, this specific properties of the super paramagnetic can be used in for the different modern applications. Similarly, anti ferromagnetic material is the similar to the ferromagnetic material in this case, uh, uh, but exchange interaction between the neighboring atoms leads to the anti parallel alignment of this field of the and this in this case the we basically represent the, the um, magnetic properties in terms of the atomic magnetic movements based on that we, we represent the actually magnetic properties. So, in this case there is a the exchange interaction between the neighboring atoms that actually try to uh, uh, leads to the formation of the anti parallel uh, alignment of the atomic magnetic movement. So, in the it is not exactly the parallel at, and so when it is anti parallel atomic there is some kind of the uh, neutralization of the magnetic effect is possible. So, here the magnetic field is cancel out in this case because in this cases the it is can arrange the anti parallel atomic movements in that way. So, magnetic fields usually cancel out and materials behaves in the same way as in the, in the parametric material. So, material can behave like a paramagnetic material in this case that means having very little uh, effect of the magnetism. Similarly, ferrimagnetic, ferrimagnetic is also kind of the magnetism, but where here the magnetic movements having the opposing movements, having the opposing movements, but similar to the anti ferromagnetism. So, uh, that is similar to the anti ferromagnetism, but in this cases anti parallel movements do not cancel each other. So, in the anti ferromagnetic in this cases of course, the anti parallel uh, magnetic movements are there, but they cancel the magnetic field with respect to each other, but in this cases although it is there anti parallel movements are there, but they do not cancel each other out and therefore, a spontaneous magnetism is always there uh, in even in absence of the uh, magnetic flux uh, available and that actually having the characteristic temperature called the nil temperature. So, the existence of this kind of this thing below the, the characteristic temperature that is as the known as the nil temperature below that this materials can behave like a ferrimagnetic material. So, these are the very basic classification of the different types of the uh, magnetic uh, material based on the magnetic susceptibility that means what is the extent of the magnetic properties retained uh, within the material based on that we can you can say these are the different types of the magnetic materials. Now, here what it works we represent the this thing uh, magnet, magnetism that in terms of the magnetic movement and this magnetic movement can be induced with the passing through a current that so current loop. So, for example, this is current loop we see this is the current loop. So, this is the way direction the current loop is there and this is the normal direction to that and here the mu m is the magnetic movement is acting uh, in this particular uh, direction. So, here mu can be represented in terms of the q into l by 2 into m where q is the charge and l is the angular momentum and m is the mass of the charge particle. So, charge mass of the charge particles and the angular momentum is basically uh, following this relation represents the mag induced magnetic movement. Uh, by application of a electric current. So, similarly here the uh, gy gyromet magnetic ratio, gyromagnetic ratio can be represents also Q by that means the this charge divided by the 2 into m. So, m is the mass of the charged particles. So, that is the ratio can be represents like that. Similarly, the orbital and the spin motion of an electron can be represents like that if you see this is the motion of the electrons and this one particular direction is creating in direction. Similarly, the spin direction is opposite here this direction this means the clockwise direction the the this field the movement direction has changes it is in other direction. Similarly, the end uh, in the nucleus with respect to the nucleus uh, this this is the direction motion and this is the 
um, momentum is acting and here also uh, this is the motion the clockwise the this orbital momentum is along this direction. So, basically depending upon the what way the spin occurs based on that this momentum uh, this orbital momentum direction uh, can represent and based on that we can find out the this magnetic field basically acting in one particular direction. Now, here also different way we can uh, represent the properties of the magnetic material depending upon the alignment of the magnetic moments in the different types of the materials. Uh, for example, in case of the paramag paramagnet, so paramagnet you see there is a random orientation of the magnetic moment. So, random so in that case so paramagnetism we understand that is a, having very little of the affected by the in the field of the magnetic field. Similarly, uh, ferromagnet, uh, ferromagnet is we can see that is the one parallel direction this moment actually uh, acting. So, this uh, alignment of the magnetic moment is basically parallel. So, that actually indicates it is having the strong magnetic field and the, that follow one particular direction or particular pattern it will try to follow this ferromagnetic material. Similarly, ferrimagnet also having magnetic properties uh, uh, like uh, paramagnet very little effect all these thing but in this cases we see the it in this the this magnetic moment having some anti parallel arrangement of the magnetic moment in terms of the anti parallel so here in this case of course the magnetic field is exactly not cancel out uh, because of the in, in terms of the um, anti ferromagnet but here some magnetic effect is always there uh, like uh, like paramagnet but anti ferromagnet here also you see the anti parallel the magnetic moments is there but in this cases in this case anti parallel magnetic moments will try to the cancel out the uh, magnetic field effect so here we see we represent in terms of the two sub lattices they follow this this anti parallel effect associated with the the different types of the uh, this anti ferromagnetism properties now try to understand the what are the magnetic field is actually works. So, we try to compare the analogy between the electrical circuit and the magnetic circuit. So, if we compare these things we can get some feeling of the what way we can represent the magnetic field or how we can represent the properties of um, magnetism we can represent uh, for the magnetic material. So, electrical field is like that. So, we see the electrical conductivity when uh, how how quick how fast the electron can flow uh, that is the that 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 is represented in terms of the electrical conductivity. good electrical conductivity is means very quick flow of the electric current but when there is a flow of the electric current from one position to another position they are having some potential differences so potential differences act actively the this the flow of the electric current so in this case uh, this uh, flow of the electric current equal to so uh, electrical conductivity into the potential differences so that depending upon the potential differences the electric current can flow from one point to the uh, another point and that is the this ratio is the measure of the electrical conductivity similarly the magnetic permeability so can we represent the b by h so b we can say that it's a analogy the similar to the this flow of the magnetic flux. So, B is basically is known as the magnetic flux density. In this case, it is defined as the magnetic flux density is the B. Uh, similarly, H is the potential differences just to that help to flow the this uh, this create the magnetic flux uh, density. So, B H is known as the the field intensity, the magnetic field strength, strength of the magnetic field or field intensity which is equivalent to the potential differences for the flow of the current but here in magnetic it is known as the field intensity. So, field intensity is basically decides what can be the magnetic permeability is possible or the um, this uh, or other way you can say that what is the magnetic flux density has, be, has been created for example for a particular medium it is having the fixed values of the magnetic permeability. So, this way we can see the H is basically uh, amount of the magnetic force induced on the given body due to the magnetic plus H. So, magnetizing force basically H can be treated as a uh, magnetizing force. Similarly, Vs can be treated as a voltage potential differences. So, high voltage means there is a potentiality to, to generate much flow of the electric current also. So, here H is also can be treated like that. The body due to the magnetizing force uh, 
H is the magnetizing force is much more that means it will create a large amount of the this uh, flux density of course this flux what amount of the flux density will be created that will be limited or restricted by the amount of the permeability through this uh, particular medium. So, here the H is the having the unit 1 amp ampere per meter B is the Weber equal to Weber per meter square 1 equivalent to 1 Tesla and it is equal to 1 volt second per meter square. Similarly, for vacuum magnetic permeability can be represent the 4 pi into 10 to the minus 7 Henry per meter 1 Henry equal to 1 ohm second. So, these are the relation between the different parameters associated with the magnetism or magnetic materials. Now, there is another magnetic material properties that is we know as the very standard curve that is the called the BH curve. So, we already B is the flux density, H is the magnetic force can be represented this thing flux density and the magnetic force H can be represented like that. So, in this way we can see that there is a hysteresis loop is there, BH curve also hysteresis loop. So, we can see there is a loop is there. So, that means there is a gap is there, one is the uh, this uh, is not exactly the uh, this follow some kind of the uh, reversible uh, uh, process. So, that is there is a gap between the two different path here. So, so that means one it is moving forward from one side and that when moving backward it follows two different path. So, between the gap between these two path is basically represented as the hysteresis loss for a uh, in a typical uh, magnetic material and this hysteresis loop is representing so many uh, parameters uh, associated with the magnetic material. So, here is basically shows the relationship between the flux density and the magnetizing force H. So, flux density and magnetizing force uh, between these two we can represent in terms of the hysteresis loop. So, here expressed to the magnetic properties also and this loop is basically generated by measuring the magnetic flux of a ferromagnetic material. So, this usually the ferromagnetic material while the magnetizing force is basically change. So, basically we can see that by changing the flux density there is a change of the we see flux density is changing there is a magnetic force also changes and this is associated to the ferromagnetic material and we can get the typical properties of this thing. So, here we see there is a saturation point further magnetism is not possible or we cannot go beyond this maximum uh, magnetic force can be reached up to certain values of the flux density. Then retentivity, uh, coercivity is there and all this thing and there is opposite flux also here B positive and here is the negative flux density in opposite direction and similarly magnetic force in the opposite direction is there the minus H. So, this way and uh, we did, this is the saturation point 1 and this is a saturation point in the opposite direction. So, this we see there are so many para, uh, typical uh, terminology associated with this BH curve. We will try to discuss one is the retentivity. Retentivity is basically measure of the residual flux density, the residual flux density corresponding to the saturation induction of a magnetic material it's corresponding to the saturation induction. So, when the saturation induced in the uh, in the in this uh, magnetic material and of a magnetic material that is the this residual flux density is basically measure of the retentivity. So, basically in this case we already mentioned the point B on the history is curve represent the retentivity. Now, and there is another terminology that is called the residual magnetism or residual flux. So, residual magnetism or residual flux is the magnetic flux density that remains within the material. Residual means the that actually remains within this material. When the magnetic force, magnetizing force is 0, that means even magnetic, magnetic force is 0, that some amount of the magnetic flux density remains within the material. So, that is the measure of the residual magnetism, residual flux. But it seems retentivity and residual magnetism it's a it represent the similar kind of the representation in terms of the magnetic flux density, but there is a slight differences between these two. In this case, that residual magnetism retentivity both are the same, but when the material has been magnetized to the saturation point. So, it reached to the limit of the saturation point, the material is magnetized up to that point. This retentivity and the residual magnetism is the same. But when the level of the magnetism may be lower than that of the retentivity value when the magnetic force did not reach to the saturation level. So, in this case this residual magnetism may be can be the lower than that of the 
saturation point even if it is not the magnetizing effect cannot reach the saturation point so that even it is less than that of point then this is known as the level of the residual magnetism so in that point of view this is the magnetism and retentivity are the uh, is, uh, the different now uh, uh, coercive force in this case is the amount of the reverse magnetism can be induced uh, in, in this particular magnetic material. So, in reverse magnetism field which is applied to the magnetic material which is basically to a magnetic material make the magnetic flux return to 0. In this case H at the point C on the hysteresis curve we can see the point C. So, here is the reverse to the residual magnetism force reach to the 0 value that is known as the uh, coercivity of this particular uh, coercivity of this material. So, amount of the reverse magnetic field basically uh, applied that reach to the magnetic material reach to the flux to 0 return to the 0 value that is the measure of the coercive force in this case. Similarly, permeability is the property of the material that actually describes the how is magnetic uh, with which magnetic flux is established in the component. So, how is the magnetic flux is basically established within the component that is the measure of the permeability of this part, magnetic permeability of this particular material. Similarly, reluctance is the opposition of the ferromagnetic material that shows the establishment of the magnetic field. So, ferromagnetism, ferromagnetic effect, so opposition to the ferromagnetic effect the this, uh, that is known as the reluctance. So, reluctance is basically analogous to the resistance in the electrical side. So, electrical circuit we can measure the conductivity, how is uh, electric current can flow that is the measure of the conductivity, but other way resistance indicates the what is the obstacles it can create to create the obstacle to move the electron from uh, one point to another point that is measure of the resistance. Similarly, reluctance is basically analogous to the resistance in an electrical circuit. Now, if we look into the magnetic material properties in the two different aspects, one is the relative to the other materials with respect to the other materials, a material with a wider hysteresis loop. So, wider hysteresis loop material is having in that cases we see that permeability for this particular material is basically low. Permeability is basically low means that it is not uh, not easy uh, is to develop the magnetic flux in this cases if the gap is the forward path and reverse path this this there is a path is there is a wide differences in the path. So, that means it creates uh, more obstacles so that to establish the magnetic flux uh, in this process. So, that is why it is the it indicates the low wider hysteresis loop means it is basically permeability is low. But other parameters retentivity, coercivity, reluctance and the residual magnetism all these properties is actually actually higher the hysteresis loop is bigger. Other way if they are related to the other materials with a narrow hysteresis loop. In this cases the narrow hysteresis loop is there in this cases the this opposite effect we can observe. The permeability can be higher that means easily you can establish the, the flux density uh, the magnetic flux within this uh, material. But retentivity, coercivity, reluctance and the uh, residual magnetism is basically low as compared to the wider hysteresis loop in this particular ca case. Now magnetic permeability can be defined is the or is the ratio of the flux density B flux density B created within the material uh, to the magnetizing field. So, it is basically presence of the magnetizing field uh, and the represented by this ratio mu equal to B by H. So, permeability equal to B by H is the B is the flux density and H is the this magnetizing field or uh, in, uh, the H. So, here permeability is much more if B is very high or H is the lower side. So, that means the flux density the more easily you can create much more flux density is there. So, or other way the it create the low magnetizing field both can increase the permeability of the magnetic field through this particular medium. So, therefore, above equation describes. So, this permeability can be mathematically defined the slope of the curve in the hysteresis loop because hysteresis loop we can see that we can use the uh, H and B hysteresis loop. So, if curve is something like that, so at any point the slope is basically indicates uh, that uh, this mu is the mu is basically the slope of this BH curve. The maximum permeability though is the point where the slope BH curve is for the 
and magnetized metal is the greatest. So, definitely the slope when the slope is the maximum at this point, we can find out the maximum permeability of this particular uh, magnetic material. But there is another measure that is called the relative permeability. So, relative permeability can be measured with taking some reference value. So, for example, the relative permeability can be defined this is the ratio of the materials permeability with compared to the permeability of the free space. For example, free space means air respect to. So, basically relative permeability is the permeability of the material by permeability of the air. So, that ratio is basically indicates the relative permeability of this particular uh, material. So, but we know this is the permeability of the air is basically 1.2560 into the minus 6 Henry per meter. So, this is the permeability for the air. So, we can compare with respect to air and then we can find out the relative permeability of the any material. So, this is the major one of the properties of the magnetic materials. Now, effect of temperature on the magnetism, we can observe that that all ferromagnetic material actually loses the magnetic property up to at certain temperature. And of course, the existence of this magnetic property is there uh, within certain temperature range. For example, even on any other uh, physical properties say mechanical properties. Mechanical properties also uh, when you increase the temperature mechanical property generally decreases and at certain stage the, when you reach to the melting point temperature then we can the strain properties become zero. So, so similar kind of things also here the magnetic properties exist up to a uh, certain temperature and beyond that this uh, magnetic properties basically disappears. This case. So, that temperature range in case of the ferromagnetic material this critical temperature or uh, is known as the Curie temperature. So, uh, this Curie temperature below the Curie temperature magnetic properties is there, but above the Curie temperature ferromagnetic material there disappears the magnetic uh, properties. So, this Curie temperature for iron it is around 770 degree centigrade. So, at this Tc uh, Curie temperature the thermal oscillation of the atoms basically overcome the orientation of the magnetic moment. We see the orientation magnetic moment once it is the thermal agi agitation is something like that these atoms overcome the orientation of this uh, magnetic moment. Then that is due to the exchange of the interaction and a random grouping of the atom atomic magnet result. So, when there is a formation of the random gr grouping of atomic atoms, so even there is an effect. So, this magnetic effect can be neutralized with respect to each other. Basically, there is a losing of the magnetic properties beyond that temperature. So, here the from the graph also good magnetic properties when there is a the particular follow the parallel arrangement of the this magnetic moment, but over the temperature the agitation increases it becomes anti parallel and finally, there is a randomly oriented of this thing and the randomly oriented is a neutralized effect of the uh, magnetic magnetic effect. Now, there are several magnetic materials are there magnetic materials and uh, but basically depending upon the magnetic properties of the some engineering materials we can categorize this uh, magnetic materials into two different category one is the soft magnetic materials another is the the hard or permanent magnetic material so we can say that soft magnetic materials is there and hard or permanent magnetic material so soft magnetic materials example of the soft magnetic materials are that iron silicon alloy soft ferrites Palm alloy, all these are examples of the soft magnetic materials. So, but in this cases, soft magnetic materials are materials that can be easily magnetized and also demagnetized. So, that means whenever there is a need to uh, create some magnetic effect of this particular material, then we can use the soft magnetic materials. So, in this case, they have the low corrosivity, we see the low corrosivity and having good permeability that means very quickly we can induce the magnetic flux there similarly demagnetize also very quickly. So, that means it is having very good permeability of the magnetic field and very low values of the corrosivity of this particular material such that they are quickly respond able to respond to the quickly change of the external magnetic field. So, they will be very quick to respond with uh, reference to the external magnetic field. So, in case of the soft magnetic material. But key characteristics of this soft magnetic materials is that low corrosivity that means low corrosivity means we can easily magnetize it and easily demagnetize also that is possible. High permeability means ability to support the formation of the, the, the support to the magnetic field. So, high magnetic field is able to support it means that high permeability is there for this particular material. Low retentivity is it means that retain little magnetiz magnetization even 
when the external field is removed, external magnetic field is removed, it can retain very small amount of the magnetic field. So, that is why it means that it material is having the low retentivity. Application, we can find out this application of this kind of the soft magnetism, transformer, electromagnets, indu inductors, chokes and the magnetic shielding. All these cases, we can find out the application of the soft magnetic material. Similarly, there are hard magnetic materials also. Examples are the ferrites, alnico, so different uh, alloy also. So, a neodymium iron boron alloy. So, uh, that is the one of the important magnetic materials which, which is known as the hard magnetic materials. But hard magnetic materials also known as the permanent magnets. So, permanent magnets exist within this, uh, this material. So, retain their magnetic properties even after being uh, exposed to an external magnetic field. So, that means that uh, it is not like the permanent magnet is always uh, the magnetic field is retained within the uh, this material within the structure and of course, definitely at the same time it will be affected with the presence of the external magnetic field. But it does not mean that in presence of the external magnetic field this mag uh, it is basically even in presence of that it can retain is the magnetization effect uh, in case of the permanent magnet or hard magnet materials. But another point is that this permanent magnet which is the magnetic properties can be retained over the time. So, that is the basic definition of the hard magnetic materials. Key characteristic in this case is definitely it is having high corrosivity that means strong resistance to being demagnetized. When you try to demagnetize it creates the strong resistance it means that it is having high corrosivity uh, for this for permanent magnetic material. High retentivity also, it is the ability to retain the magnetic field also uh, or level of the significant level of the uh, magnetic field can be retained uh, uh, in this in case of the permanent magnet. It means that the permanent magnet is having the high retentivity. Similarly, high magnetic energy product so indicates the strength and the amount of uh, magnetic energy store is there. That is why it is the having the effect of the high magnetic energy uh, product. So, if you want to make the high magnetic energy, uh, we want to produce the high magnetic energy for a, over a long time, then we try to use the, the permanent magnets also. Applications, motors and generators, a loudspeaker, you can see the magnet also loudspeaker is basically permanent magnet, we can use it. Magnetic storage also need the permanent magnet such that the high amount of the magnetic energy can be stored over a long over a long time. Sensor and actuator can be utilized and the magnetic locks and the latches also is having the this thing uh, this uh, we can find the application of the permanent magnet because all these cases we know need to activate the magnetic field by the application of the external magnetic field. So, where we do not need to the apply the external magnetic field to activate the um, uh, magnetization of this particular material. In that cases, we can use the hard mag materials, hard magnetic materials, or the permanent magnets. Now, magnets can be processed in the different ways, the magnetic materials. But here, I am trying to describe you one of the process of the that wire, magnetic wire. So that can be uh, wire that can be used, and in case of the these and uh, the different applications. So, it's basically trying to explain you the production of the filamentary niobium titanium copper composite wire. So, that wire is a very example we use the different applications of the different industry. So, but how we can process this particular wire? So, that is processing of the magnetic wire in this case magnets and that is from the superconducting wires we can produce the magnetic this wire which is applicable in the different areas. So, so that wire can be produced first we start with the niobium titanium billet. So, here and the copper lead, we see the copper lead and niobium titanium billet. Billet means it is basically solid piece having some particular shape we see in this case and it is called known as the copper extrusion cam. So, basically extruded copper, we can copper is extruded and, and the sealing also there. Mm -hmm. Then we preheat the steps are evacuated and the seal, uh, copper extrusion can, we can evacuate it and seal it. Uh, this particular container, then preheat this sample. In the preheat this sample, after preheating, we can perform the extrusion operation. So, one extrusion operation means here you can put the application of the load, and this extruded passes through this uh, small diameter cross section of the die. So, extruded here, 
and then we we can get the single core rod we can create the single core rod uh, through the extrusion process now single core rod is there then we can create the hexagonal rod from there to here transformation of the hexagonal rod in that formation and then several hexagonal rod we can create the stack of this thing stacking of the several hexagonal rod within the container and then you is a with the spray sheet even it is seal it using this one we can see that using the copper lid is basically this hexagonal rod is seal evacuated and seal uh, this complete container we can evacuate it and seal again it is preheated and again we perform the extrusion so here once we perform the extrusion it is basically multi core multi core rod it will try to produce uh, from here so you see the diameter can be different also when preheated and extrusion then once it is done preheated and extrusion this multi core rod can be produced from there we can perform the cold drawing operation so cold drawing at room temperature we can perform the drawing operation uh, of this complete system once we perform the cold drawing then we can say the multi core wire is the less diameter wire can be produced in this step so once it is done multi core wire with the lower diameter can be produced then it is heat treated heat treated and, and after that heat treated uh, we can desire impart certain properties we can we can basically modify these properties we can reduce the residual stress also uh, when during the drying operation cold drying operation through the heat treatment we basically reduce the residual stress and operation through the heat treatment process or we can improve certain properties also now once it is done heat treated then it is two state also we can we can see this is the basically winding and twisting the this wire and then again we perform the this uh, after twisting we perform the annealing operation this is one kind of the heat treatment operation we can perform annealing is basically release the residual stress also during the annealing operation so once the annealing operation is done then insulate the wire and the test the wire and dispatches and the the this is it is available in the market in the form of a real uh, this wire so we can see that from this uh, superconducting wire we can find we can uh, process the uh, magnets so in this case low temperature must be maintained in the zone where the equipment that contain the superconducting wire so superconducting wire is basically more effective in this case if we try to maintain uh, this processing is basically perform is actually uh, low temperature because high temperature this superconductive conductive properties will change at the at the actually very high temperature so therefore in this case we perform the cold drawing operation here and uh, cold extrusion process usually we, we follow in this case but other portion of the equipment can be room temperature uh, so at uh, the particular superconducting uh, can be very low temperature and other operations can be performed at the room temperature for example motors and generators have built in which only the stationary field section contain the superconducting wires that require cooling so here motors and generators also where we use the superconducting wire are there in that cases we try to maintain the this very uh, low temperature in that case so in this process we see the niobium tin has the higher critical temperature but niobium titanium alloy with the uh, 46.5 to 50% of the titanium which is more ductile and can be fabricated into the fine wire so actually if you see when you try to find out the fine or even it is the magnetic so one point you have to keep in mind that this material might be having very good uh, this thing that property that means ductile property should be good and appropriate such that we will be able to process it to the drawing or metal forming operations so that is the main thing to produce all this kind of the magnetic wire now even not only this uh, from the superconducting wire rather processing of the ceramic magnetic materials is also possible from the ceramic material the magnetic materials can be produced in this case production of the ceramic magnet is basically similar to the manufacturing of the engineering ceramics so what we can perform the engineering ceramics similar we can produce the 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 ceramic magnetic materials so desired structure it may be in the form of a garnet uh, is basically developed by careful chemical production of the this basically oxides um, the, from the oxides we can mix the oxides and then we perform the sintering operation and then compacting and sintering operation is possible to produce the this uh, desired uh, properties of the ceramic components so grain structure of 
controlling of the grain structure is also possible which is basically very important when you perform the processing of the ceramics. But other techniques that just as control cooling from the high temperatures and even quenching operation is also performed to impart uh, certain properties of the ceramic materials. It means that the similar processing of the ceramic materials we can follow here, but the ceramic materials can be converted the, from the ceramic materials, the ceramic magnets can also be produced. But what is the heat treatment effect of the magnesium ferrite? For example, one material is the magnesium ferrite. In this case, if we perform the magnesium ferrite at the high temperature also, it actually transforms to the normal spinal structures Mg plus plus ions that actually takes the takes the tetrahedral sites. So, you know tetrahedral sites that try to take at the high temperature, but when you perform the quenching operation, it actually quenching means basically rapid cooling such that it will try to retain that this high temperature structure. So, what structure it is produced at the high temperature after that if you perform the quenching operation that means very rapid cooling if you follow it will try to retain the structure of the previous steps. So, that means in this high temperature can be retained with the application of the quenching operation. But in this case saturation magnetic movement can reach up to 2.23 bore magnetons. So, that means it is BM that 2.23 BM can reach uh, using this uh, operation. But if you perform the slow cooling instead of the quenching operation then magnetic uh, mag magnesium actually reverse takes the position of the octahedral sites. So, here it was in a tetrahedral site, but here it try to take the octahedral sites such that saturation magnetism can reach up to 1.28 BM. So, which is we saw we, we can see which is lower than that of the uh, if we perform the operation at the high temperature. So, here this is because lower value of the displacement of the iron atoms from the sites uh, where they produce the magnetic movement. So, where exactly the because in presence of the uh, iron ions they actually try to produce the this uh, magnetic movement in this cases this lower values of the displacement is basically produce the, the sites which produce uh, that actually because of that low displacement it produce the lower amount of the uh, this movement the magnetic movement and that is responsible for the production very less amount of the uh, saturation uh, magnet effect in case of the slow cooling process. Now, even production of the magnetic bubble materials involves the processing of the magnetic garnet. So, from the magnetic garnet the, the magnetic bubble materials uh, can be produced also in this case it easily produced from the thin film deposition. So, for example, one 5 micrometer thin film of the magnetic garnet is basically deposited on the non-magnetic material. So, but the growth will occur the epitaxial deposition growth is basically occurs in this epitaxial with the paper orientation of the growth occurs on one particular direction. Now, cooling is basically is important but slight difference in the thermal expansion is basically it is a very important results in the stress produces the magnetization perpendicular to the plane of the film. So, cooling is performed in such way that it is of course, the all material is having some amount of the thermal expansion, but in this case it actually occurs the plane to the perpendicular to the plane of the film that actually leads to the creates in the magnetism effect as well as the ma uh, magnetic bubbles has been uh, created during this cooling process. Now, hexagonal ferrites permanent magnets it, it actually, but if we produce the hexagonal ferrites then it is actually produced by the sintering the upper oxides at 1300 degree centigrade. So, hexagonal ferrites and that means permanent magnets are produced through the sintering operations of the oxides at 1300 degree centigrade. Now, after that the magnetization is paper direction is produced the magnetic field is applied the during the pressing and the sintering particles uh, actually during the pressing and the sintering particles at that point the external magnetic is filled and magnetic is filled rotated in such a way that can be placed that it will try to produce the magnetic field even one preferred direction it, it can be produced. So, that it depends on the this uh, placement of the particles in such a way that is aligned to the magnetic field. So, that one preferred direction magnetic field will be produced even grain size can be controlled during the production of the magnetic uh, from the magnetic garnets. So, 10 micrometer to 1 micrometer can be uh, reduced and uh, it in, in that actually if there is a grain diameter from 10 micrometer 1 micrometer that reduces in, in this case is the corrosive force from 100 to 2000 
uh, odd states can be increases. So therefore, of course, smaller grain size having the more impact uh, in these cases because smaller grains uh, are smaller grains are basically associated large amount of grain boundary, and uh, that grain boundary impact the movement. So that actually brings the high amount of the corrosive force uh, associated to the small grains during the processing of the uh, magnetic garnets. Now, we will try to discuss about the one case study that is associated with the processing of the magnetic materials for, uh, for advanced application. So, here we will try to uh, understand the what are the different application, advanced application and the types of the, the magnetic materials or how the magnetic materials is processed which is scattered to the advanced application of the process. So, overview we see there is an increasing demand for the energy efficient technologies that we see every time uh, with the miniature of the component or uh, advancement of the this component. In that cases always we try to produce some kind of the energy efficient device. So, that actually drives the need for the development of the advanced magnetic materials. So, in this case this kind of the advanced magnetic materials can be applicable uh, for the electric vehicles renewable energy generation and even for the electronic devices we can find out lots of application of the advanced magnetic material where there is a energy efficient technology is the most important. So, this can be addressed by looking into the following uh, particular uh, points. First is the selection of the raw materials for the magnetic material which is more important what kind of the raw materials we can select for this particular application. Second is that what manufacturing processes is basically followed to process the uh, these magnetic materials and third is the we see the what is the application exactly application of this magnetic materials. So, that means the implications of the advanced magnetic materials development for the looking into in mind the technological advancement of the uh, so many sophisticated instrument or sophisticated equipments also. Now, there are lots of options of the magnetic materials, but it basically classify into th three different categories based on the magnetic properties. One is the ferromagnetic material, paramagnetic material and the diamagnetic material. So, ferromagnetic material we have already discussed the ferromagnetic material and the is the basically material having the effect of the uh, magnetic effect high highly influenced by the highly magnetic effect is there. Paramagnetic is little bit magnetic effect is there in this thing and diamond is having no uh, magnetic effect. So, like that ferromagnetic materials for example, iron, cobalt, nickel are significant for industrial application due to their strong magnetic behavior, but in this cases the rare earth elements such as neodymium and the samarium are used to create the high performance permanent magnet. So, basically one important thing is that when you try to select the magnetic materials in the rare earth elements is very important to produce the high magnetic capability of a particular material. So, that is the one requirement for the material which is the rare earth elements and which is not easily available this rare earth elements, but it is one important element to produce the, the magnetic material. So, advanced magnetic material. Now, all these magnetic materials are essential for the advanced technologies for example, mainly the electric motors and the wind turbines. we can find out this ad, uh, application of the advanced magnetic materials. Now, once we choose the magnetic material then next step is that what are the manufacturing processing technologies. So, one of the conventional processing technology for the magnetic materials is the powder metallurgy technique. So, powder metallurgy technique is basically most common method and this is also a method for processing of the advanced magnetic materials particularly rare earth magnets like NDFEB. So, this rare earth magnet so you see and uh, in this cases these steps are involved first is the material sourcing. So, we know first we need to collect the rare earth ores from the rare earth ores you have to extract the rare earth elements. From the ores we can find out then we can mining and after chemically process to extract the neodymium. So, neodymium extraction of the neodymium is basically not easy task. Uh, this is one of the rare earth element. So, first we need the extraction of the neodymium. Then preparation of the powder. So, we can create the powder neodymium with the along with the iron boron powder they are mixed together and with the uh, according to the proportion. So, uh, mixing together all these powders and then mixed powders are then very finely ground to achieve the uniformity. So, 
that means uniform mixing you need to achieve and as you know this is the very basic requirements of the powder metallurgy technique. So once we make the powders mix are ready then we go for the compaction. So compacted this using the high pressure technique such as isostatic pressing or the die compaction both can be applied to, uh, to get this compaction stage of this powder material. So one compaction is done then you go for the sintering operation. So here compacted material that means after compaction this material is basically heated certain temperature that means as per the depending upon the types of the materials we are using and this temperature at the high temperature it usually at the vacuum or in the inert gas environment uh, this in the in the sintering operation the compacted materials is basically heated with the specific temperature such that sintering will allow to bonding of the particles or fuse together for the different particles here and then it will try to create one solid magnet and which maintaining the microstructure necessary for the optimal magnetic properties. It means that during this operation of sintering operation by controlling the temperature and time. So we can control the grain structure such that the grain structure we already seen the grain structure having very good influence on the of, of the magnetic properties also. So in the but this grain structure is usually controlled in the sintering operation when you try to produce the solid magnet component following the in sintering operation. So once the sintering is done then the sinter magnet is basically the solid component is placed in the strong magnetic field. It is placed in the strong magnetic field and such that it is tried to align the magnetic domains this align that means depending upon align the domain that means positioning uh, of this uh, solid component as per the requirement and then try to produce the materials is the permanent magnetic properties induce the permanent magnetic properties of this material in presence of the strong magnetic field. So the steps if we see that first is the powder should be ready powder preparation for the different material then follow the compaction then sintering after the sintering we import the magnetic properties of the solid component. Now there is another processing techniques also that male spinning also male spinning is, is actually used for the of the soft magnet material. So if you remember in this this process is very applicable in case of the soft magnetic materials it is male spinning operation. In this case first the alloy preparation is there. So raw materials for example iron and silicon usually the is used for the soft magnetism or soft magnetic material and they are melted in a furnace. Then we follow the rapid cooling. The During the rapid cooling uh, they use the rotating metal wheel. So during the rapid cooling process, so resulting in the formation of the thin ribbon like structure it will produce during the cooling phase uh, uh, in case of the male spilling operation. So therefore, but rapid cool since we follow the rapid cooling it produces a very fine microstructure uh, which is basically you know uh, fine microstructure is basically important to produce the high performance of the soft magnet that means the maximum magnetizing effect can be possible to follow the fine microstructure even in case of the soft magnetic material. Now once it is done after rapid cooling you follow the annealing operation that means the in this cases the rebounds are subjected to the through the control heat treatment process and enhance their magnetic properties and of course you remove any other internal stresses also associated with the this male spinning operation. So, so these are the basic steps associated with the soft magnetic material. Now even 3D magnetic uh, manufacturing, additive manufacturing or 3D printing can also be followed to produce the uh, magnetic materials also. In this case, you know the custom shape magnets can be produced using the 3D printing process. But of course this is uh, very uh, highly advantageous because we can make any very complex uh, shape of the magnets and, and complex geometries and of the magnets can be produced using the 3D printing process. But in this case, the material preparation is the first the magnetic powders can be produced and this thing open the magnetic powders usually ND, neodymium, Fe and boron mix this thing and they are prepared using the 3D that is ready for the 3D printing process and they mix in the proportionate way and then once using some binding element uh, or the sintering operation laser sintering process so that we can we can bind. Uh, these powders together in the which is a part of the additive manufacturing process and in this case the magnetic material is printed layer by layer operation and to get the desired shape so in this case but from actually 
the 3D printing process, the, here we follow the 3D printing process for the powder, raw material in the pumpkin powder. So that powder, is, once it is ready, we can follow the traditional 3D printing process to make the this uh, printed uh, mag magnet and of course printed magnet is basically layer by through the layer by layer deposition process. So once it is done, take the desired shape, then we perform the post processing techniques. So this printed material is basically uh, sintering, the soft sinter or heat treated is performed just to improve the mechanical properties or uh, and the, the magnetic uh, mechanical properties as well as the improve the magnetic performance of this part of the 3D printed component. But challenge in the processing of the magnetic materials one is the recycling and environmental impact is also there that is one important that uh, this of course we know we use the rare earth elements for the permanent magnet. So it is having the, the environmental issue also the significant impact over the environment so that is one challenge associated with this thing. Second is that growing demand of the rare earth elements has driven the research into the recycling process. So basically we know rare earth element is not available easily. So therefore think about the this thing recycling of this rare earth element uh, such that we can reuse it and uh, this particular. Similarly based on that because this permanent magnet you can find the application of the electric vehicle and the wind turbine generator. So we are therefore reusing the materials from the electric vehicles and the wind turbine generator uh, that is the most one of the uh, challenges uh, associated with the recycling and the environmental issue associated with the magnetic materials. Even there is another process uh, challenging or difficulties associated with the magnetic material is that there is a degradation of the magnetic properties over the time. So or over the when it is uh, exposed to the even high temperature also magnetic material. So strong demagnetizing field can also be the, the in this cases these decrease the, the magnetic performance of this permanent magnet. So that is the one issue associated with this thing but of course ongoing research is going also the high performance magnets can be retain their properties for a long time or life of the magnet can be increased. So but or under extreme condition what way the this uh, permanent magnets can retain their magnetic properties that is the way of research is going on to this thing but it is really challenging at this moment for the um, processing of the magnetic materials. Now applications of the magnetic materials and the future trend we can see that uh, layers of application of the electric vehicles. So electric vehicles we can find out this particular magnets NDFEB magnets are commonly used in the electric vehicles and because high power generation can be possible and even very compact form the magnetic properties can be induced over a very compact form of this this material. But growing demand of the electric vehicles basically try to find out the advancements of the magnetic processing technique such that the maximum optimum magnetic uh, materials can be imposed through improving the uh, processing technologies of this magnetic material. Even we can find out the application of the renewable energy also we see the wind turbines utilize the rare earth magnets. So it's basically that permanent magnet it basically helps to convert the mechanical energy into the electrical energy. But of course nowadays the gradually shifting to the renewable energy system so there is, there is a need to high performance magnets in this particular industry there is a need for that. Even telecommunication and consumer electronics also we found a lots of application of the uh, magnetic materials for example smartphones, headphones, data storage system here we can find out the huge application of the uh, magnetic uh, material. So therefore, but thing is that in this cases the demand is more with the miniature of the component. So the very miniature component we need to retain the magnetic properties of this miniature component which is challenging also because we need to produce very compact material and at the high strength material say here and at the same time try to produce the high performance magnetic properties also induced in the very compact material also. So depending upon the uh, demanding to meet the miniature components. So that is also challenging associated with this the processing of the magnetic materials. Now overall you can say that the processing of the magnetic materials is basically complex and we see that thing and it is a not a single step multi steps are involved and mostly processing of the magnetic materials is follow the this the raw materials in the form of a powder rather than uh, not in the uh, in the ready made the available of the material. So we start with the powder processing technology is the best technology. Uh, to processing the magnetic materials. But key steps includes in the associated with the magnetic materials is that 
the initial extraction of the raw metals which is challenging uh, non availability of the metals is uh, another difficulties so that's why uh, recycling of the raw materials can be another option uh, to look into the initial demand of the and these uh, rare earth elements for the associated with the magnetic material and finally another key point is the final production of the high performance magnetic so final production of the high performance magnets can be produced if we try to follow to, to improve the processing of the magnetic materials so therefore each processing steps we see that involve the sophisticated techniques that influence the materials properties and the performance we see the each and every step of the preparation of the magnetic material it is a sophisticated and everywhere we see there is influence of the this process itself influence of the properties of this material. So therefore properties of the materials as well as the performance is basically affected for the each steps. Now at the same time there is increasing demand of the energy efficient solution in industry like electric vehicles and the renewable energy they actually these two fields bring the demand for the more and more the high performance and magnetic material. So that actually drives to look into the different innovative ideas related to that processing of the magnetic materials. So that is all. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.